Our last storyteller is Jessie Toth. She is uh, on the platform team at GitHub, and I'm very excited to have her. Ladies and gentlemen, Jessie Toth. So the story I'm going to tell today is about curiosity, because I think that as developers, uh, our curiosity is one of our greatest assets. Uh, so I was a pretty curious kid, uh, as I imagine most of you were too. Uh, but I found pretty early on that my eagerness to learn generally outpaced the resources available to me, especially in my like really small town. Uh, so much so that by my sophomore year of high school, uh, I had taken all the maths, all the sciences, and the two like kind of sad CS courses that they offered, uh, and that was it. There was nothing left for me. Um, so to keep myself from being bored, I had to go and like find things to study and do like independent study courses and things like that. Um, so I was obviously looking really forward to college because I thought that it was going to be this place where I could go and learn about all the things that I was curious about and discover like, lots of new things that I could you know, be interested in and you know, pique my curiosity. So I made it through that period of time. I, I graduated and I went to a state school here in California and I majored in computer science. And when I got there though, I, I realized that I wasn't going to even learn half the things that I was curious about in my classes. They just they didn't offer them, and the other half, I would have to wait a couple years to even study them because there were these prerequisites that you had to do for you know, whatever reason. Um, meanwhile, I was still pretty bored with the classes that I was taking. So I started looking for opportunities outside of the computer science department um, and to see like, things that I could learn, things I was curious about. And I heard about this honors course that the humanities department there was offering. Um, and it was kind of a weird thing. It, it spanned four semesters, and what it was was it started like at the beginning of history and went through the modern era, and it covered history, literature, art, music, philosophy, like everything you could think of. And I thought, like, that sounds really cool. Like, I want to do that. The reading list for this class is like everything I've ever wanted to read, ever. I have to take this class. So I went to talk to an advisor, and the advisor said, you can't take that class. You're not going to have enough time. You're a computer science student, and the department doesn't recommend that you do that. Uh, but I didn't listen. Um, my curiosity was piqued, and once that happens, like I don't, you can't stop me. <laughs> so I, I took the class, and it was great. I thrived in this class. I, I did all the work. I had no problems with it, um, and I spent a lot of time after class in my professor's office hours, just kind of discussing the material and and trying to learn about new things. And so one day I said to her, you know, it's, it sucks that. The only place that my curiosity is really welcomed is like outside of my department, outside of like this computer science curriculum. And she looked at me and she said, "You know, that's because you don't belong here. You know, you should you should apply uh, to be a transfer student and go to Berkeley." And I, I looked at her. I was like, "I'm I'm not Berkeley material. You're crazy." Uh, but I trusted her as an advisor, so I did it. I applied uh, and I was accepted. Which, okay. <laughs> But when I got there, something funny happened. Um, my first semester was really terrible. Like, my grades tanked, which I, I kind of expected. Um, but the weird thing was, I found that I wasn't interested in the things I was learning, even though, like, looking back, I find them pretty interesting now. And what I found was I was constantly comparing myself to my classmates. Um, because suddenly I was surrounded by these people who had been programming, like, since they were in diapers. And I was like, <laughs> I'm so far behind these people. Like, I, I, there's no way I can catch up, and I don't belong here. But I kept going, uh, and one semester, I had to fill an open slot in my schedule with kind of a more advanced computer science course. I wasn't sure what to take, so I went to a bunch of lectures for, you know, the first lecture for a bunch of classes. Uh, one of these classes was compilers, um, but I was pretty sure I wasn't interested in compilers. It sounded boring, but it fit really well into my schedule, uh, so I went to the first lecture. And as the professor explained to me, you know, how compilers worked and the fact that we would be building a full functioning compiler, I was like, this is cool. Like, I was really fascinated by it. I wanted to know exactly how it worked, well, you know, from you know, your Ruby to the machine code, like, how does that happen? So I took the class. And it was like, it was like this spark just lit right back up inside of me. And it didn't go away the entire semester. You know, even though the class was hard and it was a ton of work and I had no time for the rest of my classes, like, I just was really into it. And the next semester, I found another class that captivated me in that same way, and the semester after that. And, and finally, I felt like I was back to my normal self again. 
So after college, uh, I went to work as a Rails consultant. Uh, I did a lot of pair programming, which is awesome. I love all you guys that are doing pair programming out there. Um, it, the reason that it was awesome because I got to learn from all the people that I worked with. And doing the consulting thing, I also got to see a lot of different projects and figure out how things work and kind of see how different systems were built. Uh, but eventually, you know, I wasn't so curious about it. I had learned a lot of things, and I wanted to be able to dive a little deeper into some more interesting problems. So I left the consulting job. Um, I tried a few startups, uh, didn't quite fi find what I wanted. Uh, but eventually, I met some people from GitHub, uh, and I interviewed there and was hired. And when I got to GitHub, I kind of hit the ground running. I tackled this really big project, and I was able to finish it in the first few weeks that I was there. Uh, it was the same sort of thing as my compiler's class. It was really challenging, but I was so interested and so, so deep into it that I, I was so happy. With the first month, if anybody asked me, how's the new job? I was like, it's great. And I had this annoying permagrin on my face that everybody probably hated. <laughs> um, but then something funny happened. Uh, people started saying, hey, that thing you did, you did a good job. Um, and I can't wait to see what you do next. And they just kept saying that. And this thing started like rattling around in my head. And at the same time, I looked at what those people were doing. I saw their pull requests, and I was like, I, I couldn't have come up with a solution that they did. You know, look at these people. They've been programming two, three, four times as long as me. Like, I'm so far behind them. I'm, I'm not even sure I really belong here. Uh, and as you can imagine, that thought made me feel like really terrible. Like, I wasn't happy. I spent the next month being like not happy at all. And because I wasn't happy, I wasn't working well. You know, when you're not happy, you produce bad code, and because you produce bad code, you're like not happy, and it's this terrible feedback loop. Uh, but eventually, I moved on to the next thing. Um, I jumped in to an ongoing project there, and there was this weird bug in it. Um, it hadn't been fixed yet, and so I was like, well, I guess I'll try to figure this out. And I started reading the code. You know, I wanted to understand what is it actually doing versus you know, what we want it to do. And as I dug in, I became really fascinated by the problem. I was like, this is really interesting, and I really want to know how to solve it and what the solution is. Even if it's not me that solves it, like, I want to see what the solution is. Uh, and so I kept turning this problem over and over in my head, trying to simplify it. Um, and then one night, I was laying in bed at like 2 AM, and it just came to me. And I jumped out of bed and ran to the computer, and I coded on it all night. And then I got up the next morning, coded the whole day. And then the whole week, I was just like into it on this problem. And all of a sudden, I like pulled out and, and realized that I was feeling better. Like I felt like myself again. I was enjoying programming, and everything was awesome. So at this point, I stopped and I reflected, because I wanted to know why is it that I felt so bad in the first place, and what was it that brought me back? And what I realized was it was my curiosity that kind of got me going again and that it was the lack of curiosity that made me feel so bad in the first place. I had replaced it with you know, fear. I was afraid of people thinking I was dumb. I was afraid of showing my ignorance, or I was comparing myself with others, and I was afraid that I didn't measure up. Uh, but when I did have this curiosity, you know, I, was, I eventually had accomplished things that I never thought I was going to at the outset. I, I wasn't even planning to solve this problem. I was just curious about it. I really wanted to know, and I just got so deep into it. And I looked around at the other people, these people that I had compared myself to earlier, and I realized that the reason that they did the things that they did, the open source projects that they built, the code that they wrote, they did it because they were curious, and that's what got them into it in the first place. Um, so the moral of my story is you know, stay curious. And if you weren't curious in the first place, then go find something that makes you curious and makes you interested, and I think that you'll be very happy as a programmer. Thank you.